जय हिंद टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क वन टॉपिक ऑफ फोर्थ यूनिट ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट मशीन लर्निंग सो वट वी आर गोइंग टू कावर इन दिस इज विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम इंट्रोडक्शन देन विल टॉक अबाउट वेयर डू वी कंसिडर न्यूरल नेटवर्क वेयर कैन वी इन वट टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम वी कैन इम्प्लीमेंट न्यूरल नेटवर्क एंड वट आर डिफरेंट एरियाज वेयर इट हैज बीन Uh, implemented and has shown very good result and uh, after discussing the basic point of the consideration we'll start the concept with help of perceptron the basic unit from which the concept starts with help of perceptron we'll talk about threshold units then we'll discuss gradient descent for different type of problems which are not linearly separable and then we will conclude the lecture with capability what is the expressive capability of any neural network so i am taking this reference as machine learning from tom michel this is my reference for preparing these slides so let us start with the introduction what is a neural network neural network has different layers one is input layer one is output layer the input layer is corresponding to what inputs are given to us and output will tell us what actually we want to find out for example if we are uh, having two classes as the output then we will have the classes as the output when we are applying the classification if we take the example of classification of digits so in that case in output layer we will have 10 nodes that will correspond to each possible digit 0 to 9 so what we are having in neural network that is input layer output layer and other is hidden layer h is here for hidden layer so this uh, example shown here is a feed forward fully connected neural network so what we mean by fully connected the input layer in this example is having two neurons and the output layer is having uh, sorry the input layer is having three neurons and the output layer is having two neurons so when we are taking in hidden layer four neurons so we can see from here that the first input neuron is connected to all the four hidden layer neurons same way second same way third now these hidden layer neurons are connected to output layer neurons every neuron of hidden layer is connected to the output neuron each of the output neuron so this is fully connected neural network so now let us understand how the things are going on what actually we implement when we do neural network what is to be learned okay so in this i am having three inputs for these inputs we have taken four neurons in the hidden layer for calculation so what does it mean we will have some weightage of each input used in the output of the neuron so if i consider this particular neuron of in uh, this particular input and this particular neuron of hidden layer so there will be some weightage of this input some weightage of this input and same weightage of this this input so what does it mean it means we need to find out what is the weightage so that will be in terms of weights so we will have weights corresponding to each edge let me call it w1 let me call this one as w2 and so on okay so this input will have this much weightage so what will be considered in this particular hidden layer neuron uh, let me call it x1 what will be taken for this w1 into x1 so simply we can say that every neuro input uh, is having some weightage so that we represent with help of weights and inputs w1 x w1 x we are using for this set of weightage values that this this set of weights this set of weights we are calling w2 okay so what will happen every input will have a weightage so that we have taken as w1 x what else is each neuron will have a bias so that we have we are taking as 
bias b1 is our bias so we will have linear combination of w i's and x i's that is w1 x1 w2 x2 up to w n x n that we are representing with w1 x and this is the bias now what else is applied here that is some activation function so whatever we are showing here is the activation uh, that is sigmoid on this particular slide the activation function taken is a sigmoid so the linear combination of inputs with weightage and bias we will get the linear combination on that we have applied activation function so we are getting the output for this particular we, we are getting values for the hidden neurons now these outputs are passed to next layer in this particular example shown we are having the next as the output layer so what we will have the second set of weights that we are writing here as w naught what is input to that input to that is the set of uh, it is the set of outputs which we have got from hidden layer so that is w2 into h and these are the biases so it is linear combination of weighted inputs and biases the input here is the output of hidden layer okay so uh, on that what is applied that is some activation function so again in this case we have taken sigmoid function and then we will get y okay so we can learn from here that in hidden layer we are having four neurons in output we are having two so in total we are having six neurons now each input is connected to output uh, to hidden layer uh, neuron so we are having 3 into 4 weights required for w1 and 4 into 2 weights required for the w2 set so we are having the requirement of 20 weights and as we are having these neurons so there are six biases each neuron is having some bias value so these are our weights w1 and w2 and activation function is sigmoid here so when we will do the calculation we will apply the linear combination and then we will find out the linear sum and on that top of that we will apply the activation function okay so this way the calculation is done and we will get the required output according to our domain what input we are taking so in this particular neural network how many parameters we have found 20 plus 6 26 so actually when we will train this neural network we need to train these 26 parameters in which 20 are weights and 6 are biases so it depends on how many neurons you are taking in uh, the hidden layer and uh, output layer and it may be the case that we are having number of hidden layers when the number of hidden layer increases then it results in deep learning now the second point is when to consider where can we apply neural network okay so it, neural networks are very uh, expressible and very important very efficient input is when we can apply neural network when input is high dimensional it could be discrete value or real value for example when we talk about an image in image let me say the size of image is uh, uh, something like 500 by 500 so how many pixels will be there that is, will be the uh, multiplication of 500 with 500 that is 500 rows and 500 column so so many inputs will be there so we are having high dimensional data but uh, where we can apply neural network in both the cases whether we are having discrete value or real value it can be applied to those problems in which the output is discrete or real valued so it can be applied in all the cases of discrete and real values whether it is input or output even the output um, even it can be applied to those problems in which output is also a vector of values and uh, it works very well in case of noisy data mainly where we use neural network where we are not able to initially guess what the target function is so it is uh, applied efficiently applied where the target function is unknown and main thing is the human readability of result is unimportant 
inner calculations are very tough. There is some domain of uh, some examples have been shown here on this particular slide where uh, neural networks are uh, mainly used that is in speech recognition and image classification and we can use it, we have already used and we can further use it in financial predictions. So, we can use it in prediction problems also. So, from here we can see that it is applied to mainly classification of high dimensional data. Now, to understand uh, the concept of neural network, let us start from the basic point. So, what is the main point? What is a particular unit that is a perceptron? So, what is perceptron? Let us understand. This is one perceptron. What is perceptron taking? It is taking inputs. Here, we have shown that it is taking n inputs x1, x2, xn. All the inputs are connected to this one neuron that is our perceptron. What x0 is showing that is showing the bias value. Okay. So, because bias is uh, uh, w0 we are taking here. So, we are taking x0 that is input as 1. Others are these inputs x1, x2, xn. x1 is having w1 weightage, x2 is having w2 weightage. So, according to that w1, w2 are the weights that are representing the weightage of x1 and x2 in the calculation of the output. So, what uh, this will be done? Firstly, we will calculate the linear sum. What will be linear sum? It will be w0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 up to wn xn where n is the number of inputs. So, in short we have written is summation i is equal to 0 to n w i x i. So, this is linear sum of the weighted inputs, sum of the weighted inputs. These are our inputs and these are the corresponding weights. Now, what it will do? After doing this calculation, the perceptron will check the next level. In this, we are taking as the threshold value. So, it will give us output 1 when we are taking two classes, positive class and negative class. One I am taking as positive class and minus 1 I am taking as negative class. When it will classify it as positive class, if the linear sum is greater than 0. So, here we have defined it according to 0. If this sum is greater than 0, in this one is bias that is w0. Others are weights of inputs w1, w2, wn that are sum of that are uh, for uh, particular inputs, but w0 is the bias. So, if this sum will be greater than 0, then it will result in positive class, otherwise it will result in negative class. So, what is output of these inputs? x1, x2, xn in this particular perceptron that will be 1 if w0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 up to wn xn is greater than 0 otherwise it will be minus 1. This notation we can write in short as uh, output of x input vector. So, the input was x1, x2 up to xn that we have represented as the input vector. So, this is 1 perceptron. Firstly, what is done? Firstly, linear sum is taken and then the answer is defined according to the uh, given value, given threshold. The threshold depends on what value you are taking. So, in this if I consider w1, x1, w2, x2, okay. so the threshold will be according to the bias. So, the bias is calculated depending on what design you are doing for the uh, output calculation. According to that, you will decide the threshold. So, now let us understand uh, this concept of perceptron with an example. So, what, what I have taken here? I have taken here the AND gate. We all know that AND is taking two inputs and it gives uh, output 1 when both the inputs are 1. If one 
of the inputs become zero, either one or both one, then the answer will be zero. So the AND gate logic value is result output is one when both the inputs are ones. So now let us uh, discuss how do we represent our uh, functions through a perceptron. So let me take this example of AND gate. So from here we can see see that we are having two inputs A and B. So these are our inputs. These will have connection with the neuron means neuron will take two inputs A and B. What is my neuron? My neuron should be such that it becomes, it is the perceptron. The neuron should be such that it gives value 1 when both the inputs are 1 otherwise 0. Okay. So, how do we implement it? We can take uh, some, uh, we will uh, have some initially random uh, weights, then we will train our system and we will get the final uh, values of the weights. So, to explain this concept, let me take the weights are 0 0.7 and 0 0.7. Okay, and let me take the threshold value as 1. 1 is taken as the threshold value. So, if I take these inputs, I can see that what is done first. Firstly, we will find out the sum. So, if I take first input, first inputs are 0 and 0. So, what will be the weighted sum? 0 into 0 0.7 plus 0 into 0 0.7. So, sum will come as 0. Now, if I take second input, second input is 0 and 1. So, the weighted sum will be 0 into 0 0.7 and 1 into 0 0.7. So, what I will get value 0. 7. It will be 0 0.7 for second. For 1 0 also, we will have 1 into 0 0.7 plus 0 into 0 0.7 that is 0 0.7. And when both the inputs are 1s, then it will be 0 0.7 into 1 plus 0 0.7 into 1. So, what we will get 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 that is 1.4. Okay, so, what is the threshold value we have taken? 1. So, we can see that it will, it is a threshold unit. We have considered the inputs and when the thread output is greater than threshold, then the output will be 1. So, we are having two classes here, 0 and 1, two outputs 0 and 1. If the output will be less than 1, then answer will be 0. If the output is greater than 1, then answer will be 1. So, see with help of these weights, we are able to train, uh, we are able to implement the AND gate. So, the threshold taken is 1. So, this is our threshold unit. In threshold, we wait, set the threshold value and we calculate the weighted sum. If the weighted sum uh, crosses the threshold, then 1 is output, when it is not crossing then 0 is. Same way we can uh, consider for OR function also. So, if I take the weights 1 point something, let me say 1.2, that is more than 1 for both the inputs A and B. And we take the same threshold. Okay, threshold we take the same that is 1. So, what we were saying the output is 0 when output uh, the calculated sum is less than 1 and 1 when it is the calculated sum let me call that sum as this summation is greater than 1. So, in case first case we were getting the output 0 in second case we were getting the output 1. So, if we consider the same here, so in this we can see that on 0, 0, the OR value will be 0, the sum will be 0. 
when it is 0 1. So, this term will become 0 into 1.2, but this will be 1 into 1.2. So, sum will be 1.2 in case of 0 1. In case of 1 0 again, it will be 1.1 and in when both the inputs are 1s, then it will be 1.2 into 1 plus 1.2 into 1. So, it will become 2.4. So, we can see here when we are considering the threshold 1. Okay. In that case, we can see that in this case, the output that is the uh, weighted sum is less than 1. So, output will be 0. In all other 3 case, it is greater than threshold. So, output will be 1. It is less than the threshold. So, output is 0. These all 3 are greater than 1. 1 is the threshold we have taken. So, the outputs are 1. So, this way we can implement our AND gate. So, uh, when we will, how do we learn these? Uh, I said ki it will be 0 0.7, 0 0.7, yeah, 1.2 or 1.2. So, how do we learn perceptron? So, what is the perceptron training rule? When we will train our initially, uh, when we will train our perceptron, initially we will take some random values and then what we will do? we will update the weights. Now, the point is how do we update the weights? The weights are updated like w i is w i means previous weight plus delta w i the change how much with uh, how much value we will change the weight. It depends on the current output that we are getting. Okay. What is the current output we are getting? We have learned on a previous slide that, that is O, O x with x input O is the output. Okay. And what is T? T is the actual target. We are given input output example. So, what is T? T is the target value that we want. Okay. O is the perceptron output, whatever percep perceptron we have uh, implemented. So, this will tell us the difference which difference what is actually required and what we are getting that is difference is t minus o and in which case in case of x i input for x i we are getting this much change and it is multiplied by a small value that we call learning rate eta it is a very small constant for example 0 0.1 0 0.01 and this is called learning rate whatever we have discussed here that is a perceptron. Now, the point is, is uh, what is convergence of perceptron? The perceptron definitely converge in the case of linearly separable data. If training data is linearly separable, then definitely perceptron will converge when our eta is means learning rate is sufficiently small. So, the perceptron that we have just discussed works well for linearly separable data. Now, let us understand the concept of this separability means what is actually uh, we are saying about the convergence. So, that is the decision surface. What is the decision surface that a perceptron can take? So, here we have taken two examples. In this example, if we see this is the uh, classifier and when I see these example all are negative on other side all are positive. So, by a line we are able to classify all the examples. So, these are lean, these are linearly separable examples. This particular data set is linearly separable as we had for and same is for or. Okay. When we see this particular in this one positive example is here, one is here and I am having two negative examples, one is here, one is here. So, I am not able to draw a line such that negatives are on one side and positives are on one side. Whatever line I am drawing on both sides, I am having minus means negative examples also and positive class example also. Uh, so, this is non-linearly -separ uh, separable. So, perceptron does not work in these non-linearly uh, separable cases. So, what are examples for linearly separable that is and or and any example of non we can take XOR because XOR is one 
when one input is 0, another is 1. Means on distinct inputs, it, give us, it gives us the one output. When it is similar, it does not give. So, XOR is one example of non-linearly separable data. So, what is the decision surface of perceptron? The decision surface of perceptron is linearly separable data set. It does not work for non-linearly means which is which are not linearly separable. So, uh, linearly separable can be done with the help of perceptron. What to do in case of non-linearly separable? There we use gradient descent. So, we will discuss now what is the concept of gradient descent. Gradient descent will be used when we are having non-linearly uh, non separable data. How do we work out it? Because now we are not having the threshold value that it will be greater than this, then this will be the output and if it is less than this, then this will be the, there is no uh, clear bar, linear bar in between. So, in that case, we need some other decision surface. It cannot be a line. Okay. So, there we take the gradient descent. So, how to start with? We will consider the linear unit means the sum of, weighted sum of the inputs, same as we have taken in perceptron that is W0 plus W1x1 plus W2x2 up to Wnxn. So, that will be our uh, linear unit. So, I am taking here O as summation i is equal to 0 to n Wi xi. Now, what we want? We want to segregate non-linearly separable data. So, what should I do? Okay, so, what the concept is taken? We learn the weight such that it minimizes the squared error. Squared error. Why we take squared error? So, that the negatives does not uh, cancel each other's effect. Okay, negative differences does not, negative difference does not cancel the effect of gap. So, that is why we take always a squared error. So, what is taken here as the error vector? Error for this particular set of weights. Initially, weights will be random. Then, we will uh, learn it gradually with the help of training rule. So, the error vector is taken here as 1 by 2 summation d belonging to d. d is my data set and this is one particular example. Okay. So, it will be T d minus O d whole square means for this particular example, what was the uh, required output and what is the calculated output, the difference. So, what is our aim? Our aim is to minimize this distance, this difference. What the difference is between the actual required, actual given in the example set and calculated by us that is O d by the neuron. Okay. So, that is the concept of error here that we are trying to minimize. So, what actually is taken when we start from some point, okay, this is the landscape. What we want to start, we are starting from somewhere uh, with some weights. So, in those weights, we need to uh, do some training such that the error decreases, okay. We are having some error initially, then that error should go on decreasing. So, that is what we want, minimize the error. This is the error surface that we want to minimize. Okay. With a given uh, weight vector, we are having some error. We want to decrease this error. That is why we are taking the descent, the decrease. It should get decreased. Now, what is taken as gradient? What we want to minimize, what we want to decrease, we want to decrease the error. Okay. So, it means what gradient should be taken? The gradient should be taken with the, that error vector. So, what will be change in uh, the error? That will depend on how much changes are there in your weights. Okay. So, what will be gradient? Gradient of the error will be the derivative of error with respect to each weight, weight component. What are the weight component? W0, W1 and W0. What do we want? We want to decrease it. That is why when we will 
take a change in vector, uh, a change in weight, it will be minus this gradient. The gradient should get decreased. What is gradient? Gradient is the derivative of error with respect to uh, different weights, all the weights, uh, all the weight components and what we want to do? We want to decrease it. That is why we are taking here minus sign <coughs> and what is this? Learning rate. So, this gradient can be calculated with help of derivative. Based on that, we can calculate the weight updation. How much weight should be updated in uh, the training? So, what we are having? Uh, we need to find out the derivative of error. So, I am taking here one component. We are we have to do it for all components w0, w1 as uh, up to w1 as we have seen on the last slide. So, I am calculating here for 1. So, what is my 1? Uh, what uh, in general I have taken weight wi. So, we will uh, take the derivative of error with respect to ith weight. And what is our error? Our error was this that we discussed as squared error. This we want to decrease. Okay. So, 1 by 2 summation d t d minus o d whole square. We will take derivative of this. This is x square derivative. So, what will be the derivative? The derivative of x square as we know is 2x. So, this is the derivative. t d minus o d whole square. The derivative will be 2 into t d minus o d. Now, point is we are differentiating it with respect to vector. So, this is the amount that we need to differentiate also. Okay. So, it was x square. So, what is x? x is t d minus o d. So, this x we are uh, derivating, we are uh, having derivative, uh, we are differentiating with respect to weight w i. As we know, this particular amount is fixed. It is given in our examples and this we are calculating and how do we calculate O? It is weight into x. Okay. So, weight vector into input vector. So, what we are getting here? My, this will become derivative of this will be 0 and here as we are uh, taking the derivative with respect to w i. So, we will get the ith component here. Others will become 0 because of the derivative that we take. Okay, so, this is our error, this is our gradient descent, uh, this is the rule for which is followed for uh, uh, doing the training of for the purpose of non-linearly separable data. This will be our gradient descent algorithm. We will initialize w i to some smaller random values and what we will do? We will run these steps until the termination condition is met means we get the desired uh, minimum error. So, initially each weight will be, uh, each change in weight delta w i will be 0. Now, for each example in training, what we will do? Training examples is our data set. For each example given in the training set, what we will do? Input the instance x to the unit and compute the output. For each input, we will calculate the output and what is given in example? The output is also given. So, with help uh, uh, the target value is also given. So, with this target value and this output that we have calculated, we will find out the change in weight. What will be change in weight? The uh, current change in weight plus learning rate into the difference between target value and output value as we have taken in perceptron training rule and for which value we are calculating this? That particular x. For each linear unit weight w i, what we will do? We will update the w i with this calculated change in weight. So, this way the training is done for non-linearly separable data. What is, what are the difference? The main difference is perceptron training rule guaranteed to succeed if the training examples are linearly separable and our learning rate is sufficiently small. Linear, uh, linear unit training rule using gradient descent, it is guaranteed to converge to hypothesis with minimum squared error. Uh, it will try to find out the uh, weights, the output with the minimum 
squared error given sufficiently small learning rate even when training data contains noise and even one when training data is not separable linearly separable so these are our perceptron training rule and the uh, linear unit training rule that is the rule of gradient with help of gradient descent we are doing we can have two versions of gradient descent batch mode or incremental mode the incremental is called stochastic gradient descent what is the difference between two in batch mode what we do we compute the gradient for the complete data set and then we uh, make the change in weights and what we do in incremental that is stochastic for each training example we will make the change in the weights for each example it will be done as a whole for whole set we will calculate and in this case we will do it only for the uh, set uh, for each of the training one by one will do that is incremental whenever the example will come it will be calculated and the weights will be adjusted while in this case weights will be adjusted at end so in this uh, particular uh, lecture we talked about uh, artificial neural network where it can be applied what is perceptron the threshold unit and what is uh, what can be used how this can be trained uh, the neural network can be trained when the data is non linearly separable thank you jai